Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan, and you're listening to Call Talk for March 20th, 2019. Today's topic is customer care in the transhuman era. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you do it. Email me at calltalk at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at benchmarkportal.com any time of the day. With that, I would like to introduce the host of the show, Bruce Belfiore. Well, thank you, Alan, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. We have a great, thought-provoking show for you today. You know, technology is impacting every aspect of our lives, from home shopping, home deliveries, video streaming, voice-activated home hubs, to kids paying to watch their favorite gamers, well, play video games. And, you know, in our sector, technology developments and customer care are also developing at really a very fast and dizzying pace. And the increased use of live chat, SMS, social channels, and chat bots in customer care are staggering. And for many, these developments are confusing and even frightening. So what does all this mean for managers and for the future of call centers? And that's why we wanted to talk more about digital and automated customer care. And we brought in an expert on the topic for you, Garrison McCree who's the founder of GTM Advising, a boutique advising firm dedicated to digital technology companies, and is also currently SVP and Global Partnerships Officer of Brand Embassy, a digital customer care platform company. So Garrison is joining us from Enterprise Connect in Orlando, where he's taking some time out to talk with us, so we really appreciate that. And uh, he's going to go from us to hang out with Mickey right afterwards. Right, Garrison? Welcome to the show. (laughs) Well, thanks, Bruce. Thanks for having me, and uh, I'm excited to be here. And uh, candidly, happy not to be seeing you on a conference room floor finally, and uh, <laughs> which we, norm- we, we normally do. And we've been bumping into each other for a couple of years now and talking technology. We talked about doing this show for a while, so we're here now. And I'm I'm sorry. I hope I don't let you down. No, I'm sure you won't. Don't worry. And our connection certainly is a strange coincidence. I mean, beside beyond the call center world and always bumping uh, against each other at these shows. Uh, We happen to also be of Italian descent, and we both spent time in the Massachusetts North Shore hamlet of Boston's Hamilton-Wenham area, which is just this little speck of earth that we both have a tight connection to. Uh, No reason for any two people to connect these particular and peculiar dots, but here we are, so let's get started. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Great. So anyway, well, the call center world is evolving, uh, but, you know, I'd like to know and ask on behalf of our our, uh, listeners, what do you mean customer care in a transhuman era? It sounds kind of uh, sci-fi. Well, honestly, it's a shameless plug for my friend and CEO of Brand Embassy, Veet Horky. He just published a book under this title, Customer Care in the Transhuman Era. And if people find this whole discussion interesting, they could check out the book. But it's really fundamentally about, you know, the world's move from voice IVRs that used to say, you know, hit one, and now it says say one for X or say two for Z. Um, now it's moved to text bots and SMS and live chat and Facebook that text to respond, you know, thanks for your inquiry. How can I help you? It's all using artificial intelligence and automated technology to go in any direction you want to go. So it really is a, a hybrid human transhuman world or customer engagement that we're dealing with here. And it's, it's the wild, wild west of customer experience and call centers. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, like the wild west, it's, uh, uh, you know, very exciting can be unsettling as well. Give, give our listeners some pragmatic examples of what we're talking about here. Some concrete examples. Yeah. So, so the voice, you know, voices is still customer care is still very voice dominant, and it will be for the foreseeable future. Um, but there's there's digital transformation going on even in voice when we do a uh, voice um, uh, biometrics. So I'm, I'm doing 
authentication of your voice to ensure that it's you so that you don't have to put in stuff. So the voice itself, and of course, uh, natural language processing, where I'm listening to what you're saying, and I'm in the background, we're searching those keywords and suggesting intelligent agents are suggesting things for your live voice agent to, to do and say. So there's plenty of digital technology transformation going on in the voice world, but the actual number of voice engagements are going down slightly, and the number of total customer engagements into a call center are going up significantly. And they're going up because of the use of digital tools like live chat, co-browse, email, SMS, Facebook, listening to Facebook, typically complaints. Geez, Bruce, it's, uh, you're having a bad day today. Maybe we should take it to direct message or Twitter complaints. Mm -hmm. And other channels that are happening, like WhatsApp, not so much in the United States, but I can tell you WhatsApp is a huge uh, channel internationally, Latin America, Europe, and Asia, WeChat in China. Apple Business Chat just came out with a messaging tool. And Google uh -huh. Enterprise is coming out with a Google search. So, so there's really a number of customer engagement vehicles that are definitely growing. And the question is, how do you build a meaningful customer engagement with all this explosion of digital channels? And candidly, Bruce, you and your team have to be thinking about how do you measure both the customer satisfaction, the customer experience, and how do you measure the call center's efficiency, which everybody wants to do. Um, you know, th this plan hasn't been written. Uh, we're collectively as a, as a team building this. Yeah, no, this is a really exciting area. And uh, you're right, our team is uh, working on this very hard. We have a multi-channel uh, survey and report at this point, whereas in the past, if you go back several years, we, we only had the voice channel. And now we have the multi-channel thing because it's so important, uh, all these things that you're talking about. And um, I'll, I'll give you one example because as you were talking and I was thinking about the Boston connection here, uh, there was a story from a few years back where uh, one of the, um, a, one of the uh, car rental agencies was looking at social media on a regular basis and trolling it and making sure that they could respond to it properly. And uh, there was a gentleman in line at uh, one of these uh, agencies in uh, Boston Logan's Airport and uh, waiting for uh, somebody to give him a car, and he was expressing frustration on social media because it was taking so long. This was picked up by the people centrally uh, at the contact center who were looking at social media, and uh, they called the people in Boston, and they said, uh, you've got a long line out front. People are frustrated. Do something about it. And so somebody came out from out back and said, uh, Mr. Smith, are you here? And he raised his hand. Uh, you know, he's kind of surprised. And he says, yes. And uh, he said, okay, we got your message, and we're staffing up front now, so we'll be happy to uh, serve you as soon as possible. And they got a couple more people up front, and uh, where his, he had been complaining, he turned around, went back to his social media and said, hey, this is fabulous. So yep. they took a, a terrible situation, turned it around. And this was, you know, an example of what you're talking about, which is mm -hmm. the, uh, the meshing of the uh, human side with the, uh, the technology side. So, yep. yeah, give me Great. some more. Give us some more real examples of this, because this is it's a fascinating area. Yeah, well, my you know my daughter-in-law was in uh, Prague, lost her bag, was complaining uh, about the, the airline Lufthansa on Twitter, and to your point, they immediately pinged her back, asked her to um, go from. So she's on Twitter. They they pinged her back. They said, "Can you go to this link?" They went to the link. She went to the link and asked her for her baggage claim number, baggage claim number, and she was immediately able to get information on where it was it, her, it was lost and it was going to be delayed, but at least. She had immediate engagement started by her complaining on Twitter. Um, so that, that is social listening moving into messaging. The big buzzword now, uh, Bruce, as you know, you said multi-channel. It's omni-channel. So we're supposed to be omni-channel, but yep. in reality, the world is multi-channel, uh, going from one channel to another. Another example is uh, customers don't want to be bothered or candidly embarrassed by people calling them for, to pay their bills. Uh, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I like to believe I have enough, uh, enough money, but I'm traveling so often. The truth is I'm late. I'm a late payer. And, and, uh, and I don't want people chasing me, but if they send me a text message and say, you're late and, and we need your bill, and they give me a link, then I start a live chat. How much do I owe? And then they authenticate me. And they can even co-browse with me. So think about this. I went from an SMS to a live chat to a co-browse looking at my bill 
yes, in fact, I, you know, I buy that that's my bill and I spent all of that. And then I can go to a payments uh, platform and, and pay. Now, I never did this with any human, right? There was no human involved here. SMS, live chat, co-browse, uh, payment platform. So no human in that case. Um, and that's uh -huh. a simple reminder to pay. QVC, a little outside of the call center space, QVC for those that like to uh, do uh, TV shopping. They now have QVC mobile, live mobile TV. Download your QVC app. I'm, I'm not a shareholder. Um, and, uh, and, and you can watch <laughs> live television. You watch live television, but on the live TV on your mobile phone, there's a link to the product that you can actually buy it or peruse it online. So it's a merger of video and that. So omni-channel or at least multi-channel is definitely happening right now. It's, it's, it's really in the game. Absolutely. No, I agree. And actually, what we uh, espouse at this point is that analysis needs to be multi-channel. Execution needs to be omni-channel. So the yep. idea is that, uh, you know, omni-channel is the goal of where you want to actually be uh, performing for your customer group. To do that properly, you can't just sort of uh, step back and say, okay, I've got this grand concept and it's all going to work well together. No, uh, you have to be very methodical, uh, very uh, pointed in looking at each of your channels, looking at the metrics at all your, uh, in all your channels, looking at your performance, looking are you giving the same kind of uh, you know, seamless quality of service uh, across the channels. And that requires analyzing each of the individual channels. So we have the multi-channel report, which we want to then uh, result in the actions taken by, you know, clients that will give them really good omni-channel delivery. So, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, yeah, any further thoughts on that? Or I've got another question for you here. Well, you know, one thing to say, you bring up about testing and analyzing, and, and, and it, it, it sounds easy, and they work with, with firms like yourself but to, to do that, but I, I think you'd be the first to say that that's not easy. Um, and as you get into chat bots, I mean, bots has been a big hot word for a while, but it's not obvious to everybody how you're supposed to use Is the bot supposed to pretend that it's human, or should the bot acknowledge mm -hmm. that it's a bot? And what happens if an angry customer gets involved or a happy customer gets involved? So, like, one study that I've uh, been aware of is the uh, Austrian telecommunications company is working with Oxford University to see how to use bots versus humans. And so they have mm -hmm. customers with human agents, you know, with human, with human agents talking to humans as a baseline. And then they have bots. And what's really interesting is if customer comes in angry – then you really don't want to apply a bot. So you have to have some type of uh, customer sentiment almost at entry of the customer engagement because you're using a bot that at that point is just going to anger them even more. Now, if they come in neutral or just doing an inquiry or asking for a balance or asking for what time's my flight or something like that, you can use a bot. And you can even – the bot can have emotional expressions like, thanks, for sure, you know, but if you come in angry as a hornet and, and you have a bot going, hi, how was your day today? Um, it's not going to go over well. So right. you re, you know, right. the, the research on how to use a bot, what type of tonality the bot should have, what type of terminology should the bot use, uh, it, it's complex, and uh, we're all trying to figure it out and measure it. So it's not so intuitive, actually. Yeah, I know the sentiment component of it is so important. And uh, I imagine that when this um, – uh, you know, research is finished by the Austrian Telco and Oxford University. Uh, there's also going to be some interesting things learned about different uh, classes of people, so particularly different age groups and whether yeah. they're going to react yeah. differently. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. how are you going to get that kind of information on your caller? And maybe you will be uh, doing uh, data dips, in fact, as yeah. the call comes in. Yeah. It will be data dipping and doing screen pops from your uh, CRM. Uh, and it will also be doing the same thing from other data uh, bases that will help you to uh, classify the, the caller. And it's not you. It's really then the system that's going to be doing all this and a very intelligent and, um, you know, large data, huge data level. And then, you know, the right ones are going to end up going to the, uh, the human beings as opposed to the bots. Exactly. No, that's exactly right. Good. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, interesting stuff. Now, you know, um, what about the sentiment part? Uh, tell me what your thoughts are in terms of being able to anticipate, say, the sentiment of a texting customer. 
How how about yeah. that? Yeah, automated sentiment is 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 pretty good. It's getting better. It's not perfect. So the you know some of the numbers I heard were 86 to high 80s, maybe low 90 percent of accurately doing sentiment. Uh, really, that's not very good. That's not good enough. Um, uh, manual sentiment override is what we're seeing as a best practice. So you have auto sentiment, and then the uh, agent, uh, when and if they get involved, can override that and say, no, this this ang- this is really not an angry person. Um, which the sentiment sometimes leads to that because everyone's worried about the the disgruntled um, customer. But often the the auto sentiment is overridable uh, by the agent to say neutral to happy. So that's what we're seeing as a best practice. But it's clearly a, an important indicator that everyone's following. Hmm. Are there any other um, best practices that you can share with us on the inbound customer service side? And then after that, I'd like to ask you about sales. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, I think for, for the inbound side, it really is to find out where they're coming from, what channels. Uh, I, somebody uh, – once told me it's really not about how you want to engage your customer, although you do want them to move to self-service care. Everybody's trying to move the customer to self-service care. It's obviously more affordable. And candidly, customers don't want to talk to you any more than you don't want to talk to the customer uh, because of the expense, et cetera. So um, there's that one aspect of trying to move everybody elegantly to self-service care. Um, But the other thing is you have to be prepared to engage the customer the way they want to be engaged not the way mm-hmm. you want to engage with your customer. Let's remember the customer comes first, and we have to be prepared to answer uh, and address the customer in any of their inbound channels, whether it be WhatsApp, Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, or phone. We have to be prepared to do that. So I just think as far as inbound, expand your flexibility and expand your reach because you've got to be ready uh, to engage the way your customer wants to engage. That's a fact. Okay. No, good, good advice. Good, good, good thoughts there. And on the sales side, uh, we've done some research ourselves with regard to being able to identify sentiment uh, early on with live agents, actually. Uh, But this could all be brought onto an automated platform eventually. Um, And then, you know, understand communication styles as well. So there's, there's a number of components in all of this that need to be taken into account. Uh, there is the um, uh, there's the personality type of the person calling. There's the communication style, and then there's the immediate sentiment. And trying to bring all that together and respond to it appropriately is a big job. Not that it can't be done; it is being done in many uh, in some cases now. But uh, it's there's still a lot of road to to go before it's it's done seamlessly. No, for sure, and, and I think you touched out on the question on sales, and I don't want to jump the gun if you if you have a question in that area, but uh, the big buzzword now is service to sales because everyone is trying to reduce the cost of the call center, and there's everybody's going through digital transformation to try to reduce the costs, <clears throat> and, and while reducing costs, everyone wants to increase revenue as well, and can I do service to sales, and when do I do service to sales, how do I do service to sales, and uh, it's a McKinsey study, um, but McKinsey did a study that a, a completely digital customer experience does, in fact, have higher customer satisfaction because the customers want a digital experience. And, in mm-hmm. fact, when they come in and their mindset they're coming in, they're more likely to, to buy more, to, in fact, be upsold. So if they're coming in, they're having a, coming in through a digital channel because they want to, they're having a positive digital experience, they're, in fact, more likely to, uh, to buy more. And you can move from digital service to digital sale opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is all great input. So thanks very much, Garrison, for that. And uh, I noticed that Alan has some uh, questions uh, that have come in. Uh, Alan, why don't we uh, go over to you for, for a question here? Yes, we've got a couple questions. And the first one is from Alexia, and it, she states, as a manager, what should I expect to be dealing with over the next three to five years in regard to things you have talked about? Yeah, well, Alexia, thanks for the question. I, I think the first thing is, is don't don't think in three to five year terms. I don't mean to be provocative, but you really need to be thinking about six months to 18 months because the technology is moving so quick. So in the next six months or 12 months, you should absolutely be thinking about bots if you're not already. You should be thinking of attaching bot to live chat, uh, to Facebook, 
Um, the Instagram bot should be agnostic to the channel, by the way, so you can try bots on different channels. And use cases do, in, and I'm talking about in the next six to 12 months, um, uh, you can be doing this now and you can be trialing and testing. One point I'll make about you know the long term, I'll, I'll answer the long term question, but short term, you should be trial, trialing a lot of things right now. Most of these applications are all cloud-based applications that can be uh, integrated into even if you have on-premise big core infrastructure. You can be trialing a lot of these in a very agile way and, and uh, rinsing and repeating. Test, trial, repeat, test, trial, repeat, test, trial, repeat, and, and gather the information and data. Don't try to boil the ocean um, in one day. But to answer your question about three to five years, which feels very far out the way the technology is moving, I, I know it's going to sound crazy, but we're actually talking about telepathy, where an agent is trying to literally read the mind of the customer. Um, we're doing studies uh, with headbands that are doing things like literally mind um, wave uh, reactions. So you've got a lot of stuff that's way out there. I don't think that's five. I personally think that's 10. By the way, telepathy, I don't know what you're thinking, Bruce, because you're a strange guy, but I'll, I'll try to think what you're thinking. But it, <laughs> it, would, it, would take, it would take me 90, they had 90 minutes to think of what you were, six words. So if you want to know, you know, where it's just 90 minutes to think about, to know what, you know, six words that you're thinking about is where the way the research is now. So it's a long way out, but they are studying telepathy, uh, brainwave reading, uh, feeling sentiment, and all of this type of stuff. It's it's happening now. So long long winded answer to your short question of think six to 12 months, not three to five years. But three to five years, you're going to be think blown away, but with the technology. Yeah, I agree entirely, and uh, we really do need to be on top of these things, and the best way is to dip the toes in, not to uh, jump in, uh, you know, with both feet. Uh, in order to get used to it, in order to get up on it, and also not to get ahead of it. So all those things are extremely important, but um, what Garrison is saying about uh, dipping your toes in, getting familiar with it is so important from a competitive point of view, from a cost point of view, from a sales point of view, from all those points of view, uh, very important to do. And with regard to the uh, telepathy part of it, that really does sound like uh, sci-fi. However, um, you know, I know somebody who is getting her PhD and uh, was working on a project that was for Stephen Hawking before he passed away. Uh, trying to help him to communicate as his faculties went down and, and further down. And uh, the last thing that she was working on, and is still working on now uh, for other people, is something that has a, a bunch of, you know, uh, a cap uh, with a lot of electrodes that are attached to the head and are trying to figure out brain waves. Obviously for very simple things to begin with, but more complex things as, as uh, time goes on. So I think that's further out. Uh, my feeling is that we're not going to be seeing that really soon. But, um, you know, we are going to be seeing things that actually do uh, up our understanding of human uh, decision-making a lot over the next um, couple of years, and it's going to be very exciting to see. I'm sure that Alexia is probably saying, as a manager of people also, what do I need to be uh, yeah. concerned about it, yeah. what do I need? Am, am I going to have any people left in my center? And uh, yeah. Garrison, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a great question. How do I motivate the people and the people are all scared? First of all, there's 70% turnover in a normal in a normal uh, center. So that's huge turnover. And and 60%, our research is um, uh, 60%, 60% can be automated. So people should be concerned about what am I going to do with my career? The reality is we have to reskill the call center workforce. And, re and the good news here, and there is good news, the good news is there's someone it, to be reskilled in an area that only they can do because they're humans. And it is empathy and compassion and creativity. This is something that the, uh, the bots are not going to replace for a very, very long time up there with the telepathy area. So, so reskilling the, the, your, your people to do higher end work around the, uh, big problems that the customers are uh, really struggling with, empathetic, compassion, creativity, and unpredictable circumstances and uh, weird stuff that comes up that happens all the time, the, the automation is not going to be able to do that. So you've got to be reskilling the people to emphasize these areas about the compassion, the empathy, the creative uh, thinking, and give them room to, to work in these unpredictable environments. 
That's a great points, great points. And in doing that, okay, because some, uh, maybe Alexi's also thinking, well, you know, I've got some people who are really good at that and some who aren't so good at it. Well, uh, the, some of the tools are going to actually help those people become more empathetic. And uh, we probably don't have time to get into that a lot today, but that's going to be an interesting thing to watch as well. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of the technology is going in that space. Right. Okay. I think we've got another question. So back over to Alan. Yes, we got one in from Bob. And he's asking, when deciding how far to automate, do you recommend learning more on strat leaning more on strategy or business case ROI calculations? Yeah, from my perspective, I, I think we touched on it a bit. You don't want to boil the ocean. There's so much to do now that you can do now. Um, I, and analysis paralysis on the strategy side of it, be pragmatic is my advice. Find a business case. You're looking to be more efficient someplace. You want to try to get uh, uh, to some immediate uh, response. So I would set up a test or trial that you're trying to prove, uh, run it, uh, run that trial, measure it, rinse and repeat, and try again. So I would be very pragmatic on my automation. Don't over-strategize it. Don't overboil the ocean. Think about some practical use cases that you want to try to decrease your costs, increase your efficiency, and run a trial. Measure it, rinse and repeat. Do it over and over. Yeah, one of the things, too, that I think is uh, important to remember is that these kinds of initiatives require buy-in from a lot of people in the organization. Uh, that includes the uh, financial types, the, the bean counters, and so having your business case in order, Bob, is a good idea to do because at that point, you know, you have something that's going to catch their attention and get their sympathy, right? It's, it's uh, listening to their brainwaves, which are well known to all of us. Uh, and I used to be a bean counter myself. I was a CFO at one point. So I understand that mentality. And uh, if somebody has enough respect for me to uh, do the business case and show where the ROI is, then I'm going to be very, uh, you know, favorable toward that person, toward that project. And, uh, you know, so that's something you should definitely do. But on the other hand, you also want to, at the C level and uh, marketing level, et cetera, think about the strategy and be able to uh, be bilingual on this. I think both strategy and the ROI. Because if you're able to say, look, it's not just a matter of reducing costs. Because take, for example, some people who decided to offshore all of their operations without thinking about the consequences and live to regret that uh, for various reasons. Well, it wasn't in line with the strategy, perhaps, which might have been a high-touch strategy for that particular company, and they weren't delivering on that promise, on that strategy. So, um, yeah, I would say that, you know, when you, you, you're trying to decide how far to automate, Bob, you know, do think about the strategy and the ROI. Um, I always start with strategy, even though I used to be a CFO, because um, I'm now a CEO, so <laughs> maybe that's it, too. Any, any further thoughts on that, uh, Garrison? Otherwise, we'll ask for the next question. No, no, let's, let's move on. Okay, yes, we got very one good. Final, we got one final question here from Gino, and it must be because of soccer season heating up. What is your favorite Italian soccer team? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gino well, was listening at the beginning there, wasn't he? <laughs> well, well, okay, Garrison. Two claims to fame. I put the O2. I was the chief marketing officer for, uh, uh, in, in, in London for O2, and we put the O2 on Arsenal shirt. So um, uh, I have affinity to Arsenal. But uh, from the Italian perspective, I have a, a affinity to Roma because uh, my sons, we celebrated their 18th and 21st birthdays respectively in uh in rome and we went to roma and i uh, bad parenting moment i lost him in the disco district i think in uh, rome and I'll, I'll never forget finding him around 2 a.m dancing on the dance floor singing roma a roma roma so i just have to i'm going with roma that's that's my <laughs> that's where i'm going with okay okay good uh, that's a great know? story i love that story. Right, well on my on my side, uh, the fa favorite English team would be Manchester. I'm from Manchester, Connecticut originally, so I'm a Mancunian, and uh, that's Manchester United in that case, not Manchester City. Uh, favorite Italian soccer team is definitely Juve, Juventus. And uh, my grandfather was born in Turin. All of my grandparents were born. If you put a pin into Torino up in the northwest of Italy, 
and go about a hundred kilometers around. Uh, all my grandparents came from the, you know, that basin. So yeah, I'm a Juventino. <laughs> there you go. That Great is. question, Gino. You know, we, we've never had one quite like that before, have we, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> we have not. We have not. Okay, good. Thank you for all those questions. And actually, with that, we've come to the end of our uh, our half hour show here. Uh, Garrison, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, add before we hand things back over to Alan to wrap things up? No, I just say thanks for the time, Bruce. And we're all a community here in the you know the call center community and what's happening and digitizing and and moving on to try to make customer experiences better for uh, for consumers. So uh, you know, I, I I appreciate what you do and let's keep the dialogue going, Bruce. Okay, great. Uh, same here, and thank you very much for being on. We really appreciate it. Great insights. And with that, back over to Alan. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Yes, thanks again to Garrison and Bruce Belfiore for your insightful discussion on today's show. Be sure to join us next month for another great show to look at our huge selection of archive shows on benchmarkportal.com. Then click on Call Talk, where you'll find over nine seasons of this show. From all of us here at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This is Alan Pockotter signing out. Have a great day.